we go to the low wage category. And this category is completely dominated by the behavior of temporary help services as employers react cautiously to the economic turnaround. Some of the growth in temporary help is associated with a drop in government employment, particularly in local education, as a number of support positions are being privatized. Some of these temporary workers are also filling positions in the resurgent auto industry. Another contributor in this category is social assistance, and that's part of the larger healthcare sector. So, in summary, what types of jobs are we creating to date in Michigan's economic recovery? Well, we're create, the job gains are in both high wage and low wage industries with somewhat stronger growth in the high wage component. And job growth has been more robust in Michigan than in the United States. So it turns out to be inaccurate to attribute Michigan's current recovery to increases in local fr french fry production. So, Michigan does appear poised to continue its recovery, with 2011 going down as a, as, a, as a year of solid job growth, and one that saw the higher wage segment grow more rapidly than the economy overall. Now, before I turn to Michigan's prospects over the next three years, I need to give you just the big picture of what we see, uh, where we see the U.S. economy headed, because obviously that's relevant, but I don't want to do a U.S. forecast presentation, so I'll, I'll be brief. The best single measure of, of the U.S. economy is inflation-adjusted, or real GDP, gross domestic product, all of the goods, services, and structures produced in the economy. We do not foresee that the U.S. economy will be able to sustain robust economic growth over the next few years. All evidence is that fiscal policy will be contractionary, monetary policy effects are likely to be limited, export growth will slow this year, and foreclosure is still a threat for far too many homeowners. Nor, though, nor in an environment where Europe manages to avoid economic disaster, do we see the economy sliding back into recession. Rather, we expect moderate economic growth that generates only enough jobs to slowly reduce the unemployment rate. And you can see on this slide we have calendar year growth in real GDP that increases from 1.7% in 2011 to the 2.1 to 2.2 percent uh, uh, area in 2012 and 13, and then it accelerates to 2.8 percent in 2014. Well, how good is this? Let's give you some context, and I'll do that um, by looking at some history. You'll see that none of the calendar year growth rates that I just uh, quoted to you reached the annual rate of 3.2 percent that was realized between 1947 and 2000 on average. It seems likely that the path of the U.S. Econ economic recovery will continue to be a marathon, not a sprint. Okay, the other uh, variable we need to look at uh, in this state is uh, vehicle sales. <clears throat> and if you look at this next graph, you can see that U.S. light vehicle sales were in the range of 16 to 17 plus million units sold annually from 1999 to 2007, and then they retreated. In fact, uh, in fact, going down to uh, going down to 10.4 uh, million units in 2009, before turning around in 2010 and 2011, and also continuing up during our, during our forecast period. Actually, <clears throat> that first pink bar should be green now that we do have final data on auto sales. So let's, look at, let's take a closer look at uh, that forecast period, and I'll do that with this next graph. You can see that uh, total uh, unit sales of light vehicles improved from now through 2014 from 12.7 million units in 2011 to 14.8 million 
in 2014. Given the average age of a car on the road now is over 10 years old, replacement purchases probably can't be delayed much longer. Now I'll add the Detroit 3 profile, General Motors, Chrysler, and Ford. Detroit, you can see that the Detroit 3 share of the vehicle mar market moved up two percentage points in 2011 from 46.2% to 46.2% from the 44.2% uh, a year earlier. That increase was due in part to a temporary boost uh, ref uh, resulting from the crisis in Japan. We see uh, Detroit 3 share backing off a little, uh, settling into to a position around 45% for this year and the next two. So if you take uh, the projections for total sales and the Detroit 3 share of that market, and if you take those together, that yields our outlook for Detroit 3 sales. So uh, in 2011, we have 11.6 million total vehicles. Uh, Detroit 3 share is 0.442. If you do that multiplication, you'll get 5.1 million units, guaranteed, <coughs> within rounding. <coughs> Uh, and you can see that the Detroit 3 sales in the green bars move up from uh, progressively to 6.7 million units in 2014. Now, I just want to point out one thing, uh, one thing to you, uh, because I'm going to refer to it again in a few minutes. Uh, note that from 2010 to 2011, Detroit 3 sales increased by 800,000 units. Okay. Uh, 5.1 to 5.9, that's 0 .8, 8, 0 0.8 of a million, 800,000. Now if you look at 2011 through 2014, it increases by another 800,000 units. But it takes three years to do that, as opposed to one year. Okay, so I just want you to store that in your memory, because that's part of the explanation of what I'm going to tell you about in Michigan. So why have I spent so much of your time here uh, with this emphasis on autos? Uh, just to set the stage for the Michigan uh, <coughs> employment forecast. Well, my justifications in this next slide, which I want you to observe, and this confirms the very tight relationship between the performance of the Michigan economy. Here that's measured in terms of total jobs, no, this is total jobs, this isn't auto jobs, this isn't manufacturing jobs, it's total jobs. And let's now bring in the line that shows you the Detroit 3 vehicle sales. That's, I think, a pretty remarkable correlation when you think of uh, jobs, in, uh, measures jobs in total. So that's one thing I want to mention. And the other thing is, uh, th that I find intriguing is this flat point here. And that suggests to me, it doesn't prove anything, but it suggests that even with no more than a stable sales environment here, uh, there can be rising number of jobs in the state. What can't happen is for, sa for sales to spiral down. That is what can't happen in this state. Okay, <clears throat> one other uh, economic correlation that might be interesting to uh, this particular group is private, sec uh, private sector job growth and educational attainment. So what we did is we took the employment paths for industries that require higher educational attainment levels and those that don't, and we broke those out in this next slide from 2001 to 2009. We don't have data beyond that at the moment. So higher ed industries are those where a, number, where a minimum of 30% of an industry's workforce had at least a bachelor's degree, okay? And then the lower ed is the rest. Let's just focus on Michigan here, <clears throat> okay? Uh, you can see that the higher ed industries, this is in yellow, the solid line is the higher ed industries, and you can see that they held their own during the past difficult decade until we hit the deep recession of 2009. The lower ed industries in the dashed yellow line uh, tanked over the period. Employment more than 22% below the two, its 2001 level 
in two thousand and nine and that's compared with only a five percent decline for the higher ed industries now you know i don't use you know me i don't get into these policy implications but i'm suggesting to you that there's a policy implications here and i won't get into it though uh... i've been criticized uh, i must admit for not standing for anything and that's simply not true i do stand for anything <laughs> Now, let's turn to the uh, Michigan outlook. Our view is that the Michigan economy is more than two years into a sustained recovery. Its revival has been typical of the early stages of most past recessions in that job growth was led by manufacturing and has been more robust than the nation's. Similar to the nation, though, what has not been typical this time is the more subdued pace of recovery this time around compared with history. So the next slide here shows uh, the calendar, uh, calendar year change in payroll employment for Michigan through 2014. We don't have data for December yet and the November data is going to be revised but other than that we have all the data for 2011 and we estimate that uh, when, the, when, when all of the data are in uh, Michigan will register again of 63,500 uh, workers, okay? We do see continuing additions in, uh, to the workforce in 2012, 13, and 14, but at a more subdued pace of 26,000, 28,500, and 46,800 respectively. So why? Why do we see this more subdued pace? Three reasons. Number one is the local manufacturing sector is now settling into a more stable and sustainable growth path. And it had this huge surge at the beginning of 2011 in the first quarter. It grew at an annual rate of 13.6% in that quarter. And you just can't sustain that. But of course that gets into the 2011 numbers. Um, and so what it's done now is just settled in to a, to a lower but more sustainable growth path. And that's good. Um, the second reason for the more subdued uh, uh, job gains uh, are the, what I pointed out to you a few minutes ago, that Detroit 3 light vehicle sales are forecast to grow at a slower pace uh, in 2012 through 2014 than they did in 2011. Remember I pointed out that 800,000 unit thing to you. And the third reason is perhaps the most obvious. The state economy overall uh, is affected by continuing subpar growth in the U.S. economy over the next three years. Let's look at the private sector. I'm going to take government out of this now. There's the private sector. And you can see that the private sector job growth is a little stronger. So how can we? Someone asked me this at the revenue conference. They said, well, I don't understand this. You've got, you got, whoops, uh, you've got uh, total employment less than one of its subcomponents. Well, that's because government is negative. So total employment is government employment plus private employment. <coughs> government employment is declining. We have it declining throughout this forecast period. It's declined every year since 2003. And that's why uh, the private sector job gains are ro more robust. You see 77,500 in 2011. Uh, then we're followed by gains in the neighborhood of 35,000 per year in 12 and 13. And then we accelerate to 52,000 in 2014. <coughs> Okay, let's do some context on this. How good are these employment uh, increases compared with history? Uh, well, this next slide here shows you the annual job change in Michigan since 1940. And the job gains of 63,500 that I estimated for 2011, you can see that exceeds the average change of 58,000 that we realized between 1971 and 2000 before the before the extended downturn of the 2000s 
And then obviously the gains for 2012 and 2000.